Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, the show that gives hope and insight from real voices on the foster and adoption journey. Pull up a chair. We're glad you could join us. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Friends, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. We are so glad you guys have joined us. This is Season 21, Episode 174, and we are in Part 2 of this series we kicked off last week called Help, I Need Answers, uh, because we know that you guys have a lot of questions when it comes to your child's trauma, when it comes to their behavior, when it comes to some of the things that you have just no idea what to do with. And so we're, we're spending the next couple of weeks, really about a month, uh, answering some of the biggest questions that you guys have when it comes to your children. Last week we talked about why, why your child rejects you. Why does your child push you away? And today, uh, in just a few moments, we're going to talk about uh, why your child cannot complete a task. How many of you all out there feel us with this one, right? You give your child a simple task. You think, hey, this is easy to complete, and yet you turn around and they haven't completed the task, right? It's easy for us to believe that that your child just wants to be defiant or not do what you ask them to do, but there's actually something bigger going on. We're going to talk about that. And um, in case you are just joining us, my name is Mike Berry, along with Kristen Berry, and we are the co-founders of the Honestly Adoption Company, and we are your hosts for this podcast. You can find out more about us over at honestlyadoption.com, and you can also find out more about this podcast by visiting honestlyadoption.com forward slash podcast. Now, I want you to know that during this episode, if you guys hear like this rush of wind or these odd sounds that sound like raindrops hitting a tin roof, uh, do not ad- adjust your dial. Um, that is because we are sitting smack dab in central Indiana right now where we live. And it is nothing short of a monsoon outside of our office window right now. It's crazy. So hopefully it doesn't show up on this recording, uh, but it very well could. There's nothing we can do about Mother Nature, man. She like hits us full force uh, here in this state where we live. And some of you guys live in states where it's similar weather. But listen, you're here, you're with us, you've joined us, and I want to let you know before we jump into this episode, um, if you're one of our email subscribers, then you have uh, received a couple of emails from us this week inviting you to a new online three-part workshop that I'm teaching this coming week, March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, called The Resilient Caregiver. And in this workshop, I'm going to walk you through how to move past the exhaustion, the frustration you feel. Uh, how to change your response to your child, and how to achieve longevity on this journey. If you are a parent who has struggled uh, with your child's behavior, trying to figure out or make sense of their trauma history, if you are a parent who feels like a failure sometimes, uh, even though you're not, you need to be in this workshop. Uh, To sign up, it's 100% free. Visit honestlyadoption.com forward slash resilient. Save your seat. I need to let you guys know space is limited, and depending on when you hear this broadcast, the workshop may be full. So jump over there, honestlyadoption.com forward slash resilient. Save your spot today. We're going to have a great time this next week in this uh, online workshop, completely happening through Facebook, Facebook Live, Facebook Streaming, and I can't wait to connect with you guys. Um, Again, we already have hundreds of people signed up for this workshop. It's going to be a great time, so join us. Okay, so let's jump into this. Um, Last week, we talked about why our child rejects us. Kristen is here with me. Um, She's my go. She's she's the go-to on a lot of these these issues because um, she's been on the front lines. Both of us have been on the front lines of responding to our kids and kids and making sense of their trauma. But when we talk about things like uh, rejection and even like executive functioning, which we're going to get into today. Um, I really love her perspective. I love your perspective. I'm Thanks. talking about you like you're not even here. I know. I was going to say something. You are right here. Well, go ahead. Say it. <laughs> no, right I here. mean, no, get I in, was going to say it's awkward. Oh, yeah, it is. Like I'm she, like two feet from you. You literally are two feet away from me, and uh, I'm talking like like you're not even here. No, like it was like nice, I'm going to bring you into the studio or something. I'll go get her down. Yeah. We have her on hold. <laughs> She's going to be joining us. I'm 
literally sitting right next yeah. to you. No, I love that. That was yeah. kind of fun. You were saying nice things yeah. about me, and I, I didn't interrupt because I thought it was awesome. There you go. Yeah. So we're talking about why our child can't complete a task. Super frustrating. We have dealt with this personally over the last two decades. Let's jump into that. Well, you know, where do we start? At risk of of just um, sounding like a broken record. Yeah. We always start with changing our own perspective. There you we go. We are the adults. We are the parents. We are the caregivers. It starts with our perspective, our response, our preparation, our reaction. We set the tone for yeah. our family. And so it, it is really understandable to get frustrated. So if you're listening and you're thinking, well, shoot, I didn't take responsibility for myself. I've just been over here complaining. Look, I get it. Um, we're human. So uh, we've asked the child to load the dishwasher 25 times. The dishwasher is not loaded. We're frustrated. We're human. That's all right. Take a deep breath. Remember that that it is frustrating. That's a pretty typical response. We've yeah. asked our child, yeah. hang your book bag up every day when you come in. And every day the book bag is on the floor or the back porch or in the back of the car, you know, or they left it on the bus. And we're thinking man that's frustrating yeah I, I put a hook here for you i maybe even put your name on the hook so that you would know this is your special place for your backpack so when we're going through those things it's all right to be a little bit frustrated and when we're feeling a little bit frustrated we need to have an outlet for that yeah so before we get into the why behind this we need to know that you know having a friend to talk to having a partner or a spouse to talk to um, that's really important. It's all right to say to your one trusted friend, not everybody on social media, not the whole entire world, don't tell the next door neighbor and, and let them th think something bad about your child. Um, find that one trusted friend and say, man, I am going to lose my mind. Yeah, I yeah. might hit my head against a brick wall rather than ask my child to do this one simple task again. Right. That's all right. right. So find your one trusted person, chat for a minute, shake it off, and then come back and decide what you are going to do as the person who sets the tone yeah. in your family. Yeah. So once we're there, um, we need to address what's really going on. I, I know for you and I, um, having our home neat is really important mm -hmm. to both of us. Thank goodness, because honestly, I didn't ask you that before we got married. Um, um, we don't like, neither one of us like chaos and I, I'm glad, I'm grateful for that. Oh, thank goodness for yeah. that because that would have been tough yeah. to, uh, and I'm find talking ourselves about, like physical, like your house is cluttered. We can't, neither one of us can I stand that. I don't like that. that. I do hate not it. like when my house is messy. Yeah, I so hate it. all that to say, then we had the brilliant idea that we should maybe become foster and adoptive parents in a large family. <laughs> yes. So, um, we kind of run into these sort of conversations a lot. Yeah. Um, it's time to come to the table, come to the table, come to the table, come to the table. Yeah. And we find ourselves repeating, 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 good Lord, I just want to eat my dinner. And I have that one kid that's still dancing in front of the mirror, didn't actually get a fork. Yeah. We're all sitting down and we asked one child to bring right. the plates to the table bring and here we are sitting with everything of water, and we're like silverware, yeah. Where where are the plates? Yeah. Okay. So we begin to ask ourselves or to, to shift that perspective, to ask ourselves what's really going on. Yeah. Once we can do that, our response becomes something different. So um if we're sitting at the table and we're thinking, This is terrible. This child is just disrespectful. They won't bring the plates to the table. Well, that's it. I'm angry. Yeah. We're going to be angry. Right, right. Uh, that kind yeah. of ruins dinner if we're sitting there ticked off that this child did not bring the plates. Or we could shift our perspective. Maybe, maybe this child can't remember to yeah. bring the plates. Yeah. Maybe this child went into the kitchen and got distracted. Um, that can happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe there were too many steps. Uh, maybe we ask the child to uh, wash their hands and then bring the plates in. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to miss anything. Maybe it's a sign that something else is going on. 
Um, so we may have a child with ADHD, um, ADD, FASD, um, a TBI. I'm just going to say all the letters. We may have a yeah. child with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> Pick your letters out of the alphabet. Say, we, we list off. As yeah. I wrote them down in my notes, I realized <laughs> I that just it. looks like an alphabet. Right, um, right. You know, maybe the child has had a, a traumatic brain injury. Yeah. Um, maybe the child has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Maybe the child has attention deficit disorder. Maybe the child experienced drug and alcohol exposure before they were born. Um, maybe the child has, well, likely if you're listening to a podcast about foster care and adoption, um, your child has experienced trauma. Yes, yes. Um, and so what we know about those uh, things is that um, if something else is going on, uh, you may be asking your child to do something that their brain is not capable of doing right. without support. I, I want to be really clear that our children are capable of doing anything yeah. that they want yeah. to. Um, but they may need support. And so we're going to get into that a little bit later. But um, let's see. Oh, and resistance may be a response to that yeah. trauma. Um, so now now we're, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. The dishes didn't make it to the table. The backpack is still sitting in the back lawn. Whatever it is. We have a choice to make as caregivers. How are we going to respond? Once we are in that situation, we begin to play detective. We talk about that a lot. Yes, but that's a Once, behavior management strategy right there. That's a, that's probably that is the primary prime. Pri, did I say that right? Primary. primary? That's that. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah. the primary behavior management response right there. Right. It's your first step. Ask yourself what's really going on. Yeah. Have I noticed this behavior happening at school? Do I need to talk with the pediatrician? Do I know something about my child's? Um, past or medical history that leads me to believe that the child may have difficulty completing a task. Right. All of this is within our ability as the parent or caregiver um, to begin to dig deeper into yeah. this. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we just forget. I forget to do things. Yeah. Drop my keys in the driveway. Can't remember where I left them. We're human. Right, right. But if we're noticing a pattern of behavior, we begin to ask ourselves, wow, this is like this is like the third time this week that everybody brought something to the table, but this child forgot. Now that I think about it, the teacher told me homework wasn't turned in. Yeah. Uh, the homework was complete in the book bag, but the child missed the cue to turn the homework in. All right, so we want to dig deeper into what's really happening with the child. And, and that leads us to shifting a perspective. Not, not won't, but can't. Yeah. Not can't, but difficult. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when we begin to change that, um, I, I often find that with the most frustrating behaviors as a parent, whatever those are, if I can stop myself and ask myself, what would I be compassionate about? Uh, we have multiple children who wear glasses. I wear glasses. Um, I would hope that you would never get frustrated with me because I can't see two feet in front of my face. Yeah, yeah. That, that, would, that would really hurt my heart. I just can't see. I yeah. just need to go get my glasses. And, and so when I begin to think about... I wouldn't really get angry with our child for not being able to see without the glasses. I would just make sure they had their glasses. Right, right. I'd help them find their glasses. How often do you guys have to help me find my glasses? Because once they're off my face, I literally can't see, see them. <laughs> we I have don't. to help her find them all the time. And your hairbrush. Well, okay. the hairbrush is the older. And your phone. Yeah. I, I have to call your phone once a day. I know. <laughs> I know. And I'm really organized. Mostly because she doesn't have her glasses on and she can't see her phone. Well, that is exactly right. <laughs> That's probably you know, why. I, I take my glasses off to rub my eyes. And then forget to put them back on. And I set them down. <laughs> and then I walk away and I think, yeah. man, I can't see a daggone thing. Oh, no. Kids, help me find my glasses. <laughs> well, Crun I'm glad crunch. we went. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I that's actually happened. That's happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We digress. Anyway, well, anyway. now that you all know yeah. my dark secret, I lose my phone, my honestly, hairbrush, and my glasses. Honestly, adoption I don't podcast, know man. We're going to be honest here. What is my problem? Yeah. All right. So I would not be angry 
with one of our children who wears glasses right. because they can't see. I've right. been a little frustrated. We have one that has broken. I think we're up to 16 pairs of glasses it's at insane. this point. Yeah. Um, but I'm not mad that that child can't see without the glasses. Right. I may feel a little frustrated that we haven't put the glasses up. Um, I'm, I may feel a little frustrated um, that, that there are other things around those pairs of glasses, but I'm not actually angry that the child can't see. And so when I think about what is something that I have compassion for, well, I have compassion for not being able to see without your glasses. Yeah. Then I transfer that feeling of compassion to um, this inability or uh, need for support around completing a task. Um, I don't have any trouble completing a task. Yeah. Ever. So I can tend to get frustrated. If I have a task to do, we get it done. And, and that's the way it is. If I have 10 tasks to do, I make a list and I follow through the list and I get it done. So I can start to get very angry when other people don't finish their tasks. Yeah. If I can shift and say, what is something I'm compassionate about? I can actually change my perspective. Wait a second. This child is actually struggling to complete the task. Yeah. So the, the very first thing, play detective. Yeah. And then shift your own perspective as you begin to see what is it around completing a task that's making this difficult right. for my child. Right. Uh, very often, uh, we can uh, respond to that behavior out of frustration. We can take that behavior personally. I yeah. asked you to do it. I asked you, and you just won't do it. Yeah. But if we can stop, then our response can be one that's yeah. filled with And how compassion. many times have we, I mean, honestly, this topic came out of, lots of conversations we've had with listeners and readers and, and people who have gone through our courses who who have said things to us like they just want to make my life miserable you know oh or gosh. they just want right. to they want we want they just want to doing it on purpose they're doing it on purpose they just want to make me angry and I you listen I understand because there was a day where I I felt like that years ago before I understood the the disruption of executive functioning which we're going to get into here in just a moment you know before i understood that disruption and how trauma disrupts that i i did take it personally i i would resort to lecturing and you know at, at times shaming uh, and what was interesting is that with one of my children in particular there would be like this freeze you know like this like i always call it the rainbow wheel of death like you have on your macbook if you have a, if you use an apple product you know this like freezing deer in headlights and then i would get angrier like why won't you why are you not listening and the right. fact I is i just want you to pick your coat up yeah, and we're not talking about on. these these big things right we're talking it's about those, those daily things. frustrations yeah. where um as parents we expect something it's not happening yeah the child is not responding the way that we think that a child should respond. And then we get more frustrated, which begins to um, it cause a trauma response. So I think yeah. this is probably a good segue into what's actually going on. Yeah. Well, very often um, when a child is unable to complete a task, we're talking about uh, some type of uh, damage that has happened to the prefrontal cortex. Yeah. Um, that could be drug and alcohol exposure. That could be a traumatic brain injury. Um, that could be uh, the result of a brain flip. Yeah. So we know that whenever we are in a situation of, of survival, our brains flip, our brain stem takes over, and our prefrontal cortex isn't, isn't functioning. It's right, not working right. the way it should. Well, if the prefrontal cortex is holding uh, the ability to um, to make logical decisions, to make multi-step directions. If we know that that part's not working, then we find ourselves in that situation that you're describing, where mm -hmm. you're saying, come on now, I asked yeah. you to pick your coat up. Yeah. And the child Why freezes. Why won't you do what I'm asking you to do? And now we yeah. are creating, that alarm system is going off in the child's brain. Dad's yeah. getting mad, mom's getting frustrated, Yeah, this is not good. It's just panic, panic, panic. You know? Right. Yeah. And really, is that 
where we want to be with our kids no, is not. that response. Yeah. If we are the trigger that is causing the trauma response, is that really where we want to live with our kids? No, absolutely not. No, and that's never my intention. In fact, um, I actually just caught myself doing what you're describing just a couple days ago when I asked a child to start to boil some potatoes. Just full disclosure, our youngest is 12, so we are all capable of using the stove. Don't get any ideas that we have like a toddler up there always, making potatoes. They always want to use the stove when they want to make like Rice Krispie treats or Oh, cookies. yeah, everybody can they figure can out how to make Rice Krispies. always figure it out, yeah. <laughs> but when I said... Something healthy, it's I like, said, oh, I don't know what to do. Please boil the potatoes. And I started to get that response that you're describing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, dinner is almost ready and you never put the potatoes in? <laughs> I started to get really mad. And then stopped myself and realized I'm causing more damage. Yeah. This was not a situation where the child didn't want potatoes. The child likes potatoes. It was, yeah. That was not the issue. The child doesn't really want to make me mad. The child doesn't want us all to miss dinner. No. This child, so stopping in the middle of I'm starting to, to gear up for like a lecture. Now dinner's going to be late. And realized, wait a second something else is going on yeah. stop change my response as the caregiver um you know and that's really where we want to be was it my intention first of all i just wanted to have dinner yeah yeah absolutely um, and everybody was pitching in and that's how we do yeah things here so dinner all gets ready and we all get to the table i just wanted to have dinner i was getting really hungry but stopping myself and playing detective wait what happened and then what happened next and what might have caused this child to forget to, yeah. to put the potatoes in? Um, all of a sudden, not only did I just choose a different response, um, but I find myself in a place of compassion. Yeah. And when I can find myself in a place of compassion, I can begin to shift the way I respond to everything and the way I prepare for everything. Yeah. So I, I want to talk about this a little before we get into some of the ways that, that we can prepare differently. Uh, rewards and consequences are not bad, but they can't be our only response. Um, rewards are good. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a lover Depending of rewards. On what they hey, are, everybody, they can motivate. If, if we can get the kitchen clean yeah. um, after dinner tonight, Dad and I were hoping to go get some ice cream. Yeah. Let's see, what job do you have? Awesome. You get the dishes. What job do you have? Great. Sweeping the floor. Oh, cool. You volunteered to take. The laundry to everyone's room. Awesome. Let's see if we can get this done in the next 10 minutes. Right. And uh, we're going to go get the car started and go get some ice cream. That's a reward. Absolutely. That's a motivation. Yeah. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, uh, homework is going to need to be completed by 8 p.m. And then you can have one hour of screen time before we get ready for bed. Yeah. That's a reward. And that system is not bad in and of itself. Um, consequences are going to happen. Sometimes those consequences come from parents. Uh, some are just natural consequences. Yeah. You don't complete your work. You end up going to school with no homework done, and you find yourself having a consequence at school. Yeah. Or the teacher is frustrated with you, and you love this teacher. So you're going to feel sad yeah. because you didn't get your work done. The teacher's disappointed. Um, all of that, those, those are natural consequences, logical consequences, and some consequences come from mom and dad. Yeah. It may be, remember, schoolwork had to be done by eight, but you didn't get it done. I'm sorry, I'm not putting time on your video game. Yeah. Um, or, you know, I wanted to read you two chapters of your book tonight. I really like the book, but I, I called you upstairs 10 times yeah. for bed and, so now it's bedtime and you putzed and not, around right yeah. i'll read you a little yeah. um we try to extend grace yeah. um, anytime we can uh, so i typically don't cut off anything that creates connection but i might say something like shoot it took you a really long time yeah. to get in your room i'm i can only read you one page i can only read you two pages and i want to point something out for our listeners um the the tone that you're modeling right there is actually the tone that we need to have mm. when we respond to these kind of things. I think that sometimes, and listen, we all do this, so don't beat yourself up if this is you, but I think that one of the struggles that we have as parents, and it comes from our exhaustion, is that we can we can allow our tone and our reaction to drift into a shameful mm. or a, a critical 
tone or a critical uh, approach and that what that does is that you you will not get anywhere with your child because your child back to what we were saying earlier will translate that into danger 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 panic exactly. panic panic and the amygdala will flip and they'll stay in that survival mode they'll stay in that reptilian brain that brain stem like we always talk about when we when we talk about understanding trauma so what the way you just modeled that is really important for our listeners to 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 pick up on because when if there's a situation where say for instance you've told the child that hey listen i need you to do this this and this because if that's done then this can happen so i need you to head up to your bed i need you to head up to your bed we can read if you head up to your bed we can read if you head up to your bed but then all of a sudden if you realize you've spent the last 45 minutes trying to get the child into their bed and now you have to move on to something else Right. Your response has got to be how you just modeled that. Like, well, listen, I really wanted to read to you, but so maybe we can do that tomorrow night. Well, and I, you know? I, I think there are, that goes to natural consequences. Yeah. There are some things that are out of our control, like time. Right. So if, if we're working with our child to get them to bed, but we're now past the point of reading a whole chapter or reading yeah. two chapters, we can actually point to the clock and show our child, see, it's 930. Yeah. So we use up all the time. Right. Um, Which is helpful because that teaches, that begins to cultivate this understanding in our children that, oh, time is a real thing. Right. You know, which is important And so let's them. try again tomorrow. Right, right. Um, let's read one page. I'm really interested in this book too. I love reading with you. Let's just read one page and see what happens next. Yeah. Um, there are ways to handle that where, where the... Uh, oftentimes uh, our same children who can't complete tasks are having a, a real difficulty uh, understanding time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and when you think back to the, the thing that happened with the potatoes, um, you know, I kind of want to live in the lecture place for a minute. But if I can get myself regulated, my response can be something different. So now the child's like, so, sorry, mom, I, I was going to do it. Uh, right, what right. can I do now? I might want to respond with something like, well, nothing now because the whole dinner is going to be late. Right. But if I can regulate myself, my yep. response can be something like, you got to regulate yourself hey, first. I get it. Here. Yep. I'll grab a knife. You grab a knife. Let's slice the potatoes up. Let's get them boiling. I'm going to stick everything else back in the oven. Don't worry about it. Right. We'll get right. it right next time. Yep. Um, Again, the child with the knife is not a toddler. The child with the knife is absolutely capable of holding a knife. I feel like there need to be a lot of disclaimers (laughs) today. Okay, so um, what that leads us to. Okay, if rewards and consequences aren't bad, but they can't be our only response, what is our response? Our response needs to be um, one of preparation, Mm -hmm. um, one of understanding, uh, and one of creativity. So our role can be the external brain. Yeah. What's the external brain? Well, an external brain is, let, let's take us as caregivers, um, and you guys may have heard this term, but for us as caregivers, we have got to understand that our role with our children is to be an external brain that thinks through some of these, these details with them. Not for them, but with them. That's important, okay? It's not, it's not you stepping in for the child, you need to help the child process through certain things. So for instance, if I ask a child, hey, listen, I need you to take this trash bag out to the trash can, place it in the trash can, make sure it's all the way in the trash can, right? Well, I may find that trash bag halfway out to the trash can, not because he he or she doesn't just wants to make me mad or doesn't want to complete a task. They may have forgotten halfway to the to the trash can, right? There's so, all kind of interesting all kinds of situations, stuff between right? the kitchen and the trash can. Right. <laughs> so an external, if I'm functioning, if I recognize this and I function as an external brain for my child, I'm going to look at my child and say something to the effect of, hey, listen, I need you to take the trash out to the trash can. And you know what? I'll walk with you. Let's walk together. Which leads to the next part, which is yeah. connection. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know about you. No, I do know about you because I live with you. I don't know about our listeners. When when I'm starting to get frustrated, the last thing I want to do is 
slice potatoes with the child who I asked to do that a really long time ago. Yeah. Or um, walk out to the trash can. The reason we divide up tasks in this family is because we're a big family. I want you to just take the trash out because I'm doing the dishes and your brother is sweeping the floor. Yeah. But what we can do is we can see opportunities for connection. Right, right. I'll stand with you and, and slice up the potatoes. Now I make a choice. Um, hey, I heard you really like that class you've been taking. Tell me a little more about that. Um, yeah. Hey, I'll walk out to the the garbage with you. We get outside and and we say something like, I don't know, man, this has been crazy spring weather yeah. we're having. You want to go to the park tomorrow? Yeah. I, I was thinking we yeah. should dig out yeah. your football. So we're connecting. That is taking us, what does it take here to get to the trash can and back? 30 seconds? Maybe, if that, you know. Even if it's at the end of our right. driveway. We have a long driveway. It still only takes us like 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. So um, we see opportunities for connection. Next, we, we need to see our role as one of creativity. And what I mean by that is um, for myself, I use a lot of creative strategies to get through the things that I need to do in the day. Right. Um, that's, we're juggling a lot. We have a big family. Um, we have a blog and a podcast. We just completed our most recent book. Um, we're supposed to be finishing our audio book, which, we'll get that done. you know, while we're on this podcast, I'm going to just make a little note on my <laughs> list to get that done we today. We may need an external brain to help we us may need, remember to get that done. We have an external brain. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's our assistant who's like... That's right, our assistant. Guys, this is the third email about the audiobook. <laughs> Sorry, we digress. Um, so what do we do to make sure we get that done? I mean, and, and I think that that's, that's another uh, shifting of perspective is remembering, yeah. uh, even as we're creating this podcast right now, remembering we had a task we needed to finish also. Right, right. And someone might be frustrated with us. Yeah. So knowing that we have a lot to juggle, um, we get creative with ourselves. Um, I keep an ongoing list all the time. It stays with me everywhere. I write yeah. the list down. I cross things off. I've d oh, done this since I was a little right. kid. Um, I keep extra lists on my phone if I'm out in public and I think, um, shoot, I, I need to remember to send an email when I get home. I keep a list on my phone. There are some other ways that we can be creative with our children. And they will begin to know themselves and understand themselves and find ways to get those tasks done. Yeah. It may be something as simple as color coding. It may be something as simple as a post-it note on the mirror in the bathroom. Right, right. Um, it may be um, as our children get older and have technology, cell phones or an iPad or something, uh, sending a text message. Just yeah. checking in. Um, it's almost 5 p.m. I need to make sure your backpack is hanging up. Yeah. Um, now, it's, now it's in writing. Remembering that we use all five of our senses to get information to our brain. Sometimes we need to uh, to be creative. Yeah. Think about those five senses. What is it that you can do uh, to connect a task to your child's brain? Yeah. Um, I prefer nagging. I love it. No, I don't. I hate <laughs> nagging. Um, so if we know a child is... Uh, but we can shift into that mode at times. That's that's a reality for all of us, you know? Right. But a, a, yeah. a child may have an auditory processing disorder. If you suspect that that's what's happening, uh, you don't even need to wait for a diagnosis before you start to do things differently. If the child has trouble with auditory processing, so that's getting information from the ear to the brain, what else could you do? Yeah. Write it down. Uh, create a picture. You may have a younger child that uh, forgets the steps of getting dressed. No problem. Um, we live in a world where we can take pictures of anything at any point. Take a picture. Uh, you put your shirt on first or you put your pants on first. Or, well, you put your underwear on first. See? I'm, I'm See? struggling. Yeah. All right. So you take a picture of underwear. You take a picture of pants. You yeah. take a picture of the shirt. And you post yeah. those in your child's room so that they know what order to get themselves dressed in. Right. There are always creative ways to get to um, really the, the outcome that we want, which is for the task to be completed. Yeah. Um, another thing that, that we like to do, and, and I'd love to hear all of your creative ideas. You can connect with us on, on social media, um, on our blog. Um, 
but uh, another thing I like to do are just those mind games uh, that we play with yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Um, once I put 10 items away, I'm going to turn on my favorite song. Right, right. I'm going to clean my room for the length of this song and as much as I can get done, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, everybody's brain works differently. So you may find ways that you do things well and share those with your kids. Yeah. So you would say something like, hey, I know you're struggling, but let me tell you something I do. Yeah. Every day when I need to straighten up the office, I put away you know, 20 items. And usually that's the extent of it. Once I've put my 20 items away, I look around at my office and I think, oh, well, this yeah. looks great. I'm ready to start the day tomorrow. Yeah. Share yeah. that with your children and ask if there's anything that they enjoy doing. Yeah. They can give themselves little mini rewards as well. I'll let myself listen to music as long as I get the bed made yeah. or whatever yeah. they need to complete. Lastly, um, change your perspective. Yeah, I and this is a I think this is a good takeaway. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast the free workshop we have coming up next week called the Resilient Caregiver. The second session is actually entitled uh, actually I'm sorry the first session is um, entitled the number one secret to resiliency and one of the things we're going to talk about in that session is changing your perspective your perspective on you as a parent on your on your role as a parent but then also we're going to get into changing how you respond to your child so this is crucial changing your perspective and and reminding yourself in just a simple fashion you guys Reminding yourself that, hey, this is this is not a child that wants to make my life miserable or is just trying to be a bad child. There's something more going on here. This child's executive functioning ability has been disrupted by trauma. And therefore, they may not be able to complete a task that we think is simple as all get out, right? It may be complex for them, even if it's a two-step process. So taking a step back and saying to ourselves, okay, this is, this is disrupted functioning ability, right? Or this is, this is a trauma behavior happening um, and I need to change my response to this child because not changing your response causes the child to become even more triggered and to res resort to survival living. So I think this is a great way, a great way to end this, uh, this podcast by saying that, you know? Change your perspective. Change your perspective. The one thing I would add on to this, and this is something that we hear our good friend, Dr. Ira Chasnoff, say often, is repeat, repeat, repeat. He is continually saying that when it comes to children who, who have been drug and alcohol exposed, yes, you may find yourself having to say things a zillion times over and over again, right? You're going to have to coach yourself that you are going to have to repeat things often. It's True. going to have to happen that way. Um you know, consistency is key. Uh, we always, we always, always, always uh, need to be uh, consistent, for lack of a better way of saying it. We've got to remember that that each day has got to be a repeat of the day before. I know it seems monotonous, but listen, this is what prevents chaos with your children. This is what prevents those blowups that are that can be avoidable. Um, consistency, re repetition. It's all things that you're going to have to do. And even when you think it's a three-step task, you may have to function as that external brain that walks with your child and repeats yourself multiple times, repeats to the child the instructions multiple times. So, guys, we hope this has been beneficial. We hope this has been impactful for you. Um, listen, I want to tell you real quick, um, I said this at the beginning, but I will remind you that the Resilient Caregiver uh, is kicking off this coming Monday, March 22nd. Visit honestlyadoption.com forward slash resilient to get more information on that, but also to sign up and save your spot. And I also want to tell you that the Insight Conference, virtual conference that we're hosting is coming to, coming soon, and you're going to want to be on our email update, update list. Visit insightconference.org to get the scoop on that. You guys, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Honestly Adoption podcast. Connect with us over at honestlyadoption.com. Get caught up on past shows at honestlyadoption.com forward slash podcast. And we'll see you next week on the Honestly Adoption podcast.